Well, you know, I mean, obviously Saudi Arabia is a very important energy country. Um, our Siemens operations here, this is one of our most important countries that we do business in. Uh, we really don't see it changing. I mean, we work very closely with all the different ministries and all the all the, the politicians here in Saudi Arabia, and we will continue to do so. Our goal is how do we continue to bring new energy, new technology, new advancements to their energy system as we are around the world. And so that's our focus. What's the, what's the main sector in that sense and when we're talking about the gas and, and, and frankly, keeping the lights on in Saudi Arabia, because for years now they've really tried to upend their energy consumption, haven't they? Well, I mean, Saudi Arabia has been very focused on energy efficiency over the years. They've also been very focused on bringing more renewables into the energy mix, and that's really a common theme for countries around the world. Uh, and we see more and more renewables really helping to decarbonize the energy systems to reduce the CO2 emissions. Uh, but really, it's how do we make sure that we can get renewables and conventional energy working in concert and coexisting, and that's what we're working with Saudi Arabia for, with, and then also other countries as well. Lisa, what would you say is the biggest challenge that faces the energy systems that you provide in this region? Yeah, I think it's it's not so much unique to this region, but also around the world. I mean, we obviously, we believe that energy systems will have to decarbonize over the next 30 years. Um, and so the challenge is, how do we do that? I mean, obviously, there's a, a huge emphasis that we just spoke about with, with Saudi Arabia on renewables. That's truly a way to decarbonize. But renewables is not the only solution. We also need to find ways to decarbonize the existing facilities that we have, and we're working closely with customers here in Saudi Arabia and elsewhere to do that by, by changing fuels, by bringing in new technology. Uh, we're also bringing in new technologies in areas like hydrogen and synthetic fuels that allow us to bring in fuels that are truly much lower in carbon than what we have today in gas and in oil. So these are all ways that we're focused on really decarbonizing the energy systems for tomorrow. And I want to ask you specifically uh, about Lebanon and the Levantine countries, because at the end of the day, we see Israel, we see Cyprus, we see Lebanon, we also see Egypt really potentially having the ability to upend their energy dynamic. And of course, those that raises questions about national security and, and independence and all those kinds of things. But I want to ask you about Lebanon in particular, because I just had the chance to sit down with the prime minister of that country in an exclusive interview last week, and we addressed the issue of corruption, of systemic corruption in Lebanon. And I said, you know, when are you going to get a handle on this? And he essentially said to me, you know, we're going to get this knocked out of the park 60 to 70 percent in the next two years. And I said, I'm going to hold you to those numbers. And he said, come back and I'll show you how many people I've put in jail. So some strong words there. Yeah. How difficult is it for Siemens to operate in countries like this? Well, I mean, it's, it's a challenge, obviously, because we have very high standards within Siemens around making sure we do business the right way. Uh, but it also gives us an opportunity in countries like this to work with them and show them what we've learned over the years around corruption and how do we make sure that we do business in a very ethical fashion. And we're working closely with countries like, well, you know, whether it be Lebanon or in, in Iraq or we've done so with Egypt in the past. When we bring a kind of an energy roadmap to a country like we have in Iraq recently, it's not just about energy facilities. It's also about how do we create jobs, how do we bring compliance and ethical standards into the country and help support uh, the governments as they go through their transition for their energy systems. So we're really trying to support in much more of a holistic fashion, and, and we'll do that throughout countries here in the Middle East, but elsewhere as well. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.